what is going on, friends? Sean Don coming back with a technical analysis. Here we have Joshua Weisswanger, a frequent patron of my Grip and Rip Athletic Company Coaching Services. Yeah, I'd love to see it. Love the consistency. It's nice to be able to help somebody consistently progress over months, weeks, years. Um, get to see their kind of transformation and their progress. It's, I mean, it's quite fulfilling, I must say. Uh, so, if you're interested in any coaching services of your own, go over to my website and hit up coaching services check it out in-depth technical analysis one off just like this video you have more frequent monthly sort of coaching options all right so whatever you need i got you just hit me up all right check out my website gripperip.co let's get into it josh take a look at this 15 pound throw sent me a few different ones decent decent Good energy. I like the orbit. Path through the circle is a little down this right sector line, but the orbit, I like. Um, so yeah, let's start breaking it down. Give you some some of the finer details that you can work on over the next uh, month or so. Um, but yeah, and the winds. Hands out. You can try to be a little bit more patient here. As you see, you kind of skip from, you know, hands at 270 to hands almost straight to zero. If you let the ball get a little bit more head, you might be a little bit more connected. As you can see, like I said, the hands are really leading. And this is very, like this, I said, this is kind of minutia. This is the little stuff that not everybody needs to focus on. But for you, since we've kind of worked on a lot of things, um, it might help you out. So a little bit more patient, hands out a little bit more. Try to be with the ball a little bit more. Um, turn it back pretty well as hammer goes behind you. Could try to get your hands a little bit more up over your head. You're winding out in front of you a little bit. Uh, work on that shoulder mobility, lat mobility. Uh, you don't want that left shoulder com or left elbow, sorry, coming up too high. But if you could get this right arm a little bit more back behind you, get this uh, wire angle to be just a little bit more parallel with the ground. You might feel the hammer back behind you a little bit more, which once again could help to connect you to the hammer. Because as you can see, hammer's a little bit steep here. It's going to drop on you kind of hard. Hands low down by the hips. Not a huge deal at this point, but then we're going to see what happens in this second, uh, second wind kind of step up. Into the entry face in the back of the circle. Yeah, and then you can see just a little bit of stiffness as the hammer goes back around your head. And you can see the orbit, like I said, or not the orbit, the angle of the wire relative to what would be parallel with the ground. So parallel with, let's say, this front line of the concrete. It's just a little bit up. You Like I said, you want to try to get that a little bit flatter, more parallel with the ground. That'll help you feel the ball like said, go around behind you. If you feel the ball behind you, then you're going to feel the ball out to your right and then out in front of you, and then hopefully everything will stay the same from there on out. So, um, with this angle being a little steeper, like I said, you, you kind of drop the hands a little bit. You can see just a little bit low. Maybe see the hands up a little bit higher, ball up and out a little bit more. Because what happens is ball's a little bit low on this right side, then you see this left side just kind of rushing. So you got to be a little bit more patient on the right side as well. Or like I said, if you feel more tension back behind you in the winds, you feel more tension off to the right, it'll be easier to stay stable, it'll be easier to be patient. Whereas right now, like I said, you have the tendency to kind of shift back a little soon, left side goes a little early, relatively stable, but I think it could be a little bit better. Send the ball out left a little bit more, because like I said, you do shift back just a little bit before the ball gets to zero right about there. So if you see the ball's at 270, you're setting it in, and then you just start shifting back a little bit towards the end. Coming off the heel, you kind of got to do that, but I think... Um, like I said, ball up and out a little bit more, wider on the right side, more patient on the right side. And you just got to let the hammer build the tension a little bit more. I think you just have the tendency to be a little bit, uh, not angsty, that's not the, the term. You're just doing a little bit too much. A little antsy, that's that's the term. You're a little antsy here. Um, set in direction pretty well. You can see you're really kind of sitting down and back against the ball, which is good. Keeping those hips down, sitting against the ball will help kind of keep you centered as the ball goes around the left. Um, and then you see... Almost a little too extreme. Like I said, I think this comes back from the shoulder before the ball gets to zero. Left shoulder sitting back. And then you're kind of really back far over this right side, which makes it hard to turn this right foot, which makes it hard to keep this hip up into the ball. 
jaw would fall. You see there's a little bit of tension coming up through this left side. And then your right leg is just a little bit behind. Interesting. So just a little bit behind, butt kicking a little bit. Not a huge deal. But yeah, you can see getting pulled around that left side a little bit. Catch. You catch pretty early. Decent hips. You could be heavier. I guess you could have your hips a little bit more underneath you, a little bit more knee flexion. Um, catching flat-footed like this is fine. You, I think we've tried to work on the ball of the toe before a little bit. Um, that might help. But like a little bit deeper knee flexion allows the hips to come underneath you more, and you can still maintain this upright torso position. Um, here's, I think, let's see what happens here. Yeah, not as much direction in this turn because when you do catch, I think you are a little bit forwards because your, sh your feet are kind of shallow. Uh, if your hips are underneath you more, you can kind of see the angle of the torso is already a little bit forwards here rather than totally back against it. You don't want to cut off the orbit, but you want to, I guess, set up the orbit in a way that lets you kind of have this upright, flat back sort of position. Whereas, like I said, you're a little bit forwards here now. Heel comes down, right foot's a little shallow into the sector, so it's going to be hard to get those hips up into it. Uh, you're pretty patient. Left side not shifting back any worse than it was in the first turn. But with this kind of foot position, like I said, staggered, your right foot's a little bit deeper in the sector. It's going to be harder to get your hip up into it. And you can see your hands kind of turned counterclockwise, or I should say clockwise. Your hands, if you look from your, from your point of view, if you're looking at your thumbs in this position, they're pointed towards like one or two o'clock, which is kind of a sign that uh, you're pushing the ball, but maybe pushing a little bit too much. Maybe turn your hands counterclockwise, like I said, 11, maybe 10 o'clock. I feel like we've talked about that before. Get that left shoulder down a little bit, because as you can see, it does come up. It is higher than the left. The left side's higher than the right, sorry. And with that, it's just going to affect connection a little bit. Um, but you're pretty patient. This position's actually pretty good. I like this. Right foot's really turning well. Much better here. Hips can still be up into it a little bit more, but I think the, the big thing here is the shoulder position. This is a common thing for you. Kind of looks like you shrug up. Left left side's a little high. Right side's a little low. And then, like I said, it's uh, the angle from the shoulders to the hips are just not ideal. Like I said, I think in my mind, I don't think there's any scientific proof behind this, but in my mind, when I watch throwers, especially the best throwers, their left shoulder seems to be a little bit lower here. Their their shoulders and their hips are kind of turning on the same plane, um, whereas. Your shoulders are kind of tilted down to the right, and your sh hips are kind of tilted up to the right. Um, so, food for thought. Um, but that being said, decent single support, kind of catch, not bad, a little tight in the shoulders. Um, like I said, a little bit more knee flexion. Now you're getting to the point where your left leg is bent, but then your right leg is almost straight, um, at least in terms of looking at the shin angles. A little bit more on the ball of the foot, a little bit more shin angle in the right foot. Might be good. Catch. And then there's not much tension here. Because there's not much separation, I guess. Um, so you catch. And you're turning. You're waiting for the ball pretty well. Pretty good. Pretty good here. You can see the left leg kind of getting a little bit ahead. And the right leg's a little bit behind. But same thing here. Not much direction backwards. Like there was in the entry. you got to really sit back onto that heel. Um and get a little bit more direction into it. And same sort of thing here. You can see that, that like I said, those uh, the hip and the shoulder planes. Uh, left side's starting to go up a little bit more in the shoulder. You start to see that left side really peeking up towards the end of double support. And then it's like you don't quite finish your turn. You get to about right here, and then you start to see you're going with the hammer. So you got to kind of let the hammer go around you more, get into the direction of the sector a little bit more. Almost you want to feel the ball pull you forward. So if you're leaning back just a little bit in double support, uh, it should be kind of uh, give and take. So if you lean back a little bit in double support, then you're going to kind of let the hammer pull you a little bit forward. In single support, you should feel the ball grow towards the sector. And it looks like you're coming off just a little bit early. The ball is kind of pulling you more around the left. As you can see, you get to the side of the foot a little early. Not to say that it needs to turn to a certain point before you put the toe down, but it's just an indicator that you're maybe not finishing the entire rotation going into this third and final turn. Um, and then you start to you get your hips up into it pretty well. But still, same thing here. Hip and shoulder planes. 
left hips down, left shoulders up. You got to kind of get down the same thing. So left shoulder down, uh, shoulders down in general. And you catch pretty even at 270. Not the most separation here. Like you don't want to get a ton of separation. You don't want the ball super far ahead. That means you're kind of cutting off the natural movement. But um, like I said, a little bit more of a shin angle on this right leg. If you're on the ball, the foot a little bit more, that might help. And then since your shoulder plane is a little bit higher on that left side, that's going to kind of reflect in your uh, finish. Left shoulder a little bit higher. Pretty stable here, though. Like your right foot lands and it sticks. You get your hips up into it. But you can really see this is the left side pulling through here. Your right side's really not working that hip up that much. Like you have double support, but it's not a very effective, I guess, double support because that right foot kind of stalls out. And you can see you're kind of finishing across the body. You see hips are almost pointed back behind the hammer, almost towards the camera while your shoulders are turned ahead. Left side's pulling across, get your hips up into it, and you finish pretty strong. So, yeah, just trying to point out some things that you can work on. There's nothing, like, glaringly wrong, you know? Like, we've talked about a lot of things in the past. Uh, so I'll just run through it real quick. Like I said, maybe changing up the lines a little bit, getting, like I said, reaching, combing your hair a little bit more, I guess, is a term that I've heard a lot. And like I said, trying to get that wire angle a little bit more parallel with the ground, ball up and out more on the right side, let the hammer build more an entry because like I said you're just a little bit antsy there and that's kind of what sets it up good direction here though and then from there it's just keeping that right side with it being more patient on the right side keeping that right side with it and then like I said trying to fix that shoulder that shoulder that left shoulder just really high kind of disconnects you from the whole thing but sturdy looking throw good energy I'd like to see the progress you're making this offseason so Josh let me know if you have any questions if anybody else out there would like technical analysis hit me up Go to my website, gripandrip.co. Maybe check out the merch, shirts, hats, long sleeves. I've heard good things about them. I like them myself personally. And uh, support the brand. Support the sport. Support your boy. It's kind of, you know, all in one. So thanks for watching. Until next time, Sean Don. Peace and out.